One of the most crucial skills that one needs to master while performing a titration is how to read off the volume of solution inside a burette. In this video, we will be explaining how to read off the volume of solution in your burette. Let's start by defining what a meniscus is. The meniscus is the curved surface of a liquid and is essential in measuring the volume of solution in the burette, as the readings are determined by observing the position of the lowest part of the meniscus of the solution in relation to the graduations on the burette. This is done by the following. When taking the reading of the volume of a burette, make sure the meniscus is at eye level, as reading the meniscus at an angle will result in parallax error. There are three different types of lines used on a burette. The first line is the longest line that generally wraps around the entire circumference of the burette with a number on the top of the line. These lines represent the volume given by the number on the top of the line. For example, the highlighted line represents the two milliliter line. The second type of line comes after the longest line, which represents an increase in volume of 0.1 milliliter. If we look at the burette, as we move down, the lines would represent 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, and 0.4 milliliters. The next and final type of line is the one that appears to be slightly longer than the lines above it. This line represents 0.5 milliliters. The smaller lines under the 0.5 milliliter would then represent 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, and 0.9 milliliters. Then the longest line appears representing a move up in volume of 1.0 milliliters. Now that we know what the line represents, how do we read a measurement of the burette? We first look at the meniscus and we note which two of the longest lines it lies in between. Of those lines, the longest line above the meniscus is recorded. In this example, the two lines represent 20 milliliters and 21 milliliters. So we record 20 milliliters as it is above the meniscus. We now record the first decimal place by using the same method we used before, but by using the smaller lines in relation to the bottom of the meniscus. However, if the bottom of the meniscus is on a line, the first decimal place will be the value of that line. In this example, the bottom of the meniscus lies between the 0.4 and 0.5 milliliter lines, and we would record the value as 20.4 milliliters. However, when using a burette, the volume readings have to be recorded in two decimal places, and at this point, we have only recorded it to one decimal place. For the second decimal place, the meniscus lies between line 4 and line 5, i.e. 0.4 and 0.5 milliliters. We must now inspect carefully and estimate the final decimal. You must ask yourself, is the bottom of the meniscus closer to the line above or below the meniscus, or is it in the middle of the two lines. If it is closer to the top line, the second decimal will range from 0.01 to 0.03 milliliters. If it is closer to the line at the bottom, it will range from 0.07 to 0.09 milliliters. If it is in the middle, it will be between 0.04 and 0.06 milliliters. However, if the bottom of the meniscus lies on a line, the second decimal place will be recorded as a zero. In the example, the bottom of the meniscus is closer to the bottom line, so the range is from 0.07 to 0.09 milliliters. Now, we give an educated estimation and choose one of those values. In this case, it is 0.09 milliliters, 
and so the final recorded value is 20.49 milliliters. You must always record to two decimal places as the second decimal contains the uncertainty of the measurements as we have to estimate the value. When reading off the volume, a piece of plain paper can be held a little way behind the burette to show the meniscus clearly. Using the method described in this video, you should have no problem reading off the volume of solution in your burette during your titration experiments.